I've built a few Gauge 1 live steam locomotives so far. This is the next one I'm going to build and it's going to be scratch built and it's going to be live steam and I hope you find the series of following videos interesting to watch. Please hit the like button and also subscribe to the channel and it just does help to bring the numbers up and keep the supporters for the channel. Hello and welcome to part 33 of the GWR Prairie Tank Scratch Build. Um, you may be wondering why there's not been a video uh, around for the last couple of months. Um, that's because I've been off doing a couple of other things and one of the main reasons is because of this. Before I used to build, started building gauge one live steam locomotives, I used to build stationary steam engines. And what you see here is a model of a paddle engine. And it's a marine paddle engine that dates from HMS Gorgon. There was a Royal Navy ship that was built in 1836. And this was one of the engines that they had in the ship. And this is when the Royal Navy were experimenting with steam propulsion in their ships. And I thought this was such a lovely engine to build. I built this back in 2006, 2007, 2008. It took a couple of years to build. And once I'd finished it, it had been on static display. I'd run it on compressed air and I'd run it on steam. And then for the last, since 2009 up until 2023, up until now, it had just been on static display. Well, I decided to sell this model. So I spent a little bit of time getting all the dust off it and going through it and checking it uh, because obviously with it just being static for so many years the valves had stuck and it just because it hadn't been used it had not seized up but it just wanted going over and a clean up and a polish and all the dust taking off it and everything polishing up and just going over it uh, just to get it back into working order. Um, so that's where some of my time's been. Um, so I know we're all interested in steam and models of various types so I'll just show you what this one looks like. So it's actually finished now. So okay let's fire it up and we'll just show you it working. Got some compressed air on it and just very gently open the, the regulator and so you can see it working. I think that looks lovely. I mean, in terms of the scale speed, this is probably the speed they ran at when they were actually, if like the full size one. If you imagine these on the outside represent the paddle wheels, I've put these bob weights on. Just the engine needs a little bit of weight to turn against. So rather than having paddle wheels at the time, I just made these bob weights just to smooth things out. But it does actually run without these bob weights as well. But with the bob weights on, it just runs a little bit smoother. So I've been spending some time getting this back into a working order, which it is now. I'll let you see that run for a little bit. Okay, I'd say that was a lovely little engine that I made back in 2007 and I'm, uh, I'm going to be selling this one. But I liked the model so much, I made two of them. So here's the other one. So you've got the condenser. So steam flows out from the cylinder into this condenser and then through into this pump and this is pumped out and on the real thing this would have circulated back into the boiler. So there's a cylinder there. So this is the second one. So I like the engine so much I built two of them. Um, at the time it was relatively simple 
if you've got the machine all set up for turning a cylinder or milling something it's just as easy to make four cylinders as it is to make two and so that was the, the logic behind making two of them so although I'm selling one I've still got another for myself I ought to be reassembling this one all in good time now there's the say the base plate and the top bit it's all there I say when I made these I paint I assembled them painted them up and this is the one that's still in obviously still in pieces that you can see but I did assemble the other one so that's a project that was going on in the background anyway back to the GWR prairie tank scratch build so here we are you might recognize this from a few of the previous videos and believe it or not it is actually finished I want to say finished I mean I've made all the parts everything is there now so all it needs to do <laughs> all I need to do now is assemble it one final assembly uh, just to test everything all fits together and, and we'll test it out so everything's all here while I was working on the stationary engine I have been finishing off the bits and pieces on this one so everything is all here so the next task we'll be doing now is assembling the gauge one prairie tank locomotive here it is all finished and assembled as I say finished in as much as all the parts are made it now is going to be painted so we'll just have a little quick look at it a closer look take you in closer I say it was a good exercise to reassemble everything because this is the first time everything has been put together and uh, it showed me the order how things are assembled um, so it's a good exercise in that respect because there's nothing worse than spending an hour or so making an assembly and then suddenly find you can't put the next part in because something else is already in place and you've got to strip it backwards to put it all together I think I mentioned on some of the earlier videos it's, uh, in terms of manufacturability it's all very well being able to make something the next stage is can you actually assemble what you've made and this is the most uh, one of the trickiest parts let's say there it is all finished um, now you may be wondering why don't I fill the boiler up with water put some fire underneath and set it off on the track to see if it'll work the chances are I'd be very surprised if it worked first time without any tweaks I'm sure there are going to be tweaks that I'm going to have to do for example I think I've got the blast pipe the right length I think I've got the blast pipe diameter the right length um, there's some of those issues uh, that can make it steam or make it not steam and these will only show themselves when you steamed for the first time so rather than say try and run it on the tracks to steam it and then spend hours or days trying to fix some of the issues and then when you finally get the issues and it's all running you become very very reluctant to want to take it apart and I've been to meetings where you sometimes see locomotives running around in their unfinished painted state and that's because the builder has spent so much time probably getting the locomotive running properly and tuning it that once it's running he's very reluctant to take it apart to paint it because again once you assemble them again you've got to start tweaking them and massaging them to try and get them working again so the next thing is take it all apart give everything a good degreasing a massive clean to get all the solder flux off and all the dust and all the swarf ready for priming and then finally painting so take a good look at it here it is in its brass state hopefully the next video you'll see is me painting the parts and reassembling it again and it should look a little bit more like the real thing.